Welcome to the Bridging Insider. I'm Kara, and today our guest is Karen. Um, and she has something that's been bothering her that we're going to take a stab at. So what, what are we helping, about, helping for some help with? So I have a torn meniscus. I have a lateral tear in my left knee. I think I tore it in March of this year, okay. doing a very heroic thing, trying to walk down the stairs. Um, it's always those life, <laughs> life things that just take us down. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Um, and the thing with a torn meniscus is, am I going to fix the torn meniscus? No. Is Bridging going to help with that? No. What we're going to help with is restore movement to her knee because her knee's been protecting and we're, we're not going to force anything. So just to get overall function of her foot, knee, hip, core to work more appropriately as it's been compensating from that original injury, which is now five five months ago. Yeah, I guess it's been yeah. a long yeah. So it should have done some healing on its own. Um, but there's a complicating piece to this. So what also happened to that leg once upon a time? Um, so when I was 13, I fell in the snow and I broke my tibia and my fibia. And I was in a cast for two months from my toe to my hip, um, got the cast off, never went through physical therapy, wasn't able to walk properly, had all kinds of atrophy, and it took me a whole year to learn how to walk again. And it's been consistently giving me issues here and there ever since. I've got XI joints from there, issues from that, and yeah. you know, every time something's achy, it's always the left side. So um, what we've seen with other people uh, in previous videos is when we've had a cast or it's been immobilized, often there's some reactions that have been shut down, um, just little interactions between muscles that coordinate from like ankle to knee to hip. And so we'll check that while we're at it also because that could be either what contributed or is still just making it kind of yucky for you. Um, so... I'm Kara Lindell. I am the founder of the Bridging Institute and the Bridging Technique, and we take a little different spin on how pain and coordination may be bothering you. Um, unlike uh, others where you look at stretching and exercise to help, we look at do the pieces actually work together, uh, how your muscles are coordinating and how your joints can transition. Um, it's a systems view, which comes from my background as a systems engineer and a movement specialist. So with that, let's get going. Um, just so we understand how Karen's able to be in the real world, I wanted just a quick check of how is she moving just while <coughs> standing. So I'm going to hold at her shoulders, and we're just going to go from side to side. And that, so she moves more easily to the right than the left. Um, you may not be able to see the difference, but um, I can feel it. So there's turning right, and again, there it's... It's very subtle difference, but it's just a little, not quite as easy to the left. And then let's see about forward and back. Um, same thing. It just feels a little bit more hesitant on the left. So overall, not a bad place to start from. Um, is it giving you pain all the time or just you're just aware that it's not right? Currently, it hurts when I walk upstairs. If I stand for too long, um, I won't attempt going downstairs with it right now because okay. it's I'm afraid. Okay. Um, um, sit, and actually, I'm going to let you lay down, and let's okay. just check some movement in that leg. Oh my back? And between, yeah. There we go. And so we're going to compare between right and left. And so I'm just going to lift. And this is the one that's not uh, got any issues. And I'm holding at her ankle. All right, I do feel a difference. Do you? Can you tell? Yeah. So Super. this one lifts easily all the way up to the hip. This one, I feel lifting from the ankle to the knee, and it gets stuck at the knee, and so then nothing lifts from the knee to the um, hip. So it's almost like if this was the link between two train cars, the link is uh, jammed. Um, does your leg turn? Yes. And no. <laughs> it used to. Yeah. All right. So um, I am going to such a collection of peanut balls here. <clears throat> Some are softer than others. And did I just get this crooked? Oh, well. Um, I'm going to support this on this one. And is that okay? Yeah. It's, Do you want good. this one supported also? Uh, yes. All right. If that's okay. 
Yes. Well, sometimes one being up and one being down just stresses your back. Yep. So, you know, there we go. That should stay in place. So normally I want to get some motion below her knee to match to above her knee. And I can support on the sides. I can support above and below. I can support from in front and in back. But the whole thing about the cast when you were a child lends me to want to do some just big overall broad support with a bigger ball. And we call this making a sandwich. Um, just to get some kind of overall wiggleness um, availability of all the teeny tiny connections and circulation in the whole segment. And even though I'm uh, encompassing pretty much your whole knee down to the ankle, um, I'm not catching what was in the foot with the cast and up to the thigh with the cast. If it feels like we need to, then we'll figure that out. Um, but what I, okay, if I hold and I just kind of bounce, her leg is supported on something, it's bouncy, and this has bounced to it. There's nothing bouncing, is there? No, no, yeah. it's and, dead weight. Yeah, so we want to get some, some bounce. Um, I like to call it wiggly jiggly because that means the the muscles are available and kind of loose and able to start working with each other and I'm gonna hold your foot so that things aren't bouncing too much and that's gonna help your ankle relax a little bit too so all of this could be why it got injured just walking down the stairs you might have planted your foot just a certain way that then pulled up at your knee and well, and before this happened, my T-band had been extremely tight for like a month. Yeah. And I had been working and working and working and releasing the T-band. And I finally got the T-band to release like that day, and I was feeling great. And then I walked down the stairs, and that happened. So I think the T-band was holding everything together. Well, it's funny. There was a research study a couple of months ago that came out looking at IT band tightness and they actually came to the conclusion that um, it's probably tight for a purpose and perhaps not trying to loosen it all the time is uh, a good thing. Okay, so what's actually starting to happen is some rotation at your hip. Your leg is starting to turn better. There. It's still a little tight at your knee. and But, okay, I'm, I'm moving the same amount. And you feel it bouncing Feels now. Better. Yeah. Yeah. So we're starting to get some overall movement. <coughs> so yes, if I had focused just on her knee or an ankle, we would have made some progress, but this is just uh, better. So we're taking into account more of the lifetime factors that happen to her leg rather than just the specific injury. There. Now your hip is moving better. But I do feel some tightness at her hip. So... I'm going to let you hold this for a sec. I'm going to move this up and as high as I can get it so that we can do the same kind of thing up with her femur, the bone in your thigh, and because it was impacted by that cast once upon a time also. Oh, my gosh. Do you feel anything moving? No. <laughs> no. No. I think so. And that's... There's... Uh childbirth stuff and pelvic floor stuff yeah that has probably always been there but got worse after baby yeah so um the thing about it's like we bridging is getting muscles to work together but or resetting how they they pair up and work in groups um, but along with every muscle is a blood vessel a nerve um lymphatic uh structures, there's fat, there's skin, there's just all the other tissue types that are in your limb. And um, there's movement between all those different subsystems. And when you have a cast on, it just shuts everything down. It's like uh, kind of putting it in the freezer. And you just need some motion between all the different parts. There. Oh, that's getting bouncy. And I can feel it all release, but I don't feel it there. I'm feeling it release here. Do you feel any nice. a warmth? Because sometimes as circulation starts to relax or 
the structure is relaxed. You, there's a circulatory change that feels warm. Not yet. I usually do when you work with me, though. Mm -hmm. Not yet. It's more of like I feel like all the muscles that were tight in my hip just mm -hmm. relaxing and calming down. Right. So Karen just mentioned that we've worked together in the past. We have. Um, most recently, she got rear-ended last year, and it's been a whole slew of things with her arm and shoulder um, because of how she was holding the steering wheel when she was hit from behind. Um, we have not done anything with a leg, in, if ever, in a long time. So it's been a while. That's true, because I was distracted by my wrist. Yeah. <sighs> but I did have, now that I think about it, I did have some hip issues after that as well. Yeah. Okay. So... I, it's getting, it's getting pretty nice and bouncy. So now, now that we've got some different motion in the whole segment, all the big segments of her leg, let's see about getting her knee to work together better. And I'm gonna grab a second little one so that we can match up sides and then uh, front to back. So again, same idea. I wanna just get some overall general motion a, a, enabled to be happening here and then we're going to put it together to the joint motion of flexing and extending so. this is why my kids call you the wiggle lady <laughs> it's all about the wiggles when muscles can have fun and wiggle they work together better there Whoa, what I do feel different is your hip. Yeah. Goodness. Uh, I have a feeling we may have to do a quick quick little wiggle on your right leg just to make sure it's nice and nice and happy too. Wow, okay, so I'm, I'm right above her knee and so it's all the muscles that connect um, just from the thigh right at her knee and they're just kinda, as they relax, then they can work together better. And then I'm gonna go below her knee, same idea. But there's not as many muscles, and so they're not gonna be quite as wiggly. But again, your thigh is what's really changed and how it's moving. There. Okay, so the last one I wanna get is above, or the front and back of your knee. So I'm gonna support from underneath and on top. What would you like? You okay? To do? No, you're fine. Oh, yeah. I always try to help. <laughs> As and does that's everyone. The <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I've got one peanut underneath and one above. And what I would like your knee to do is just sort of bounce, like it's hinged and the hinge is uh, oiled up and it's not quite there yet. So I'm gonna move this out just a little bit more so that I've got more room to support. There we go. And oh well, that's better. So, um, okay, I'm behind on the back and on the front, I'm, um, I'm below the kneecap. And what I want to feel is a transition of her hamstring. Um, and it is not quite there yet, but it's getting there. It almost feels a little twisted. There. Oh, there. That's all fun and happy. Okay, so the last thing I want to check is related to what I mentioned earlier about the ankle to the knee. So I'm going to support, and so when we there's uh, the muscles on the front of the ankle and the tendon that connects at the uh, kneecap to the quads, <coughs> they, these all need to work together so that when we bend our ankle, this moves and then this fires up and I am not seeing it and I don't feel it. So that would be an issue when you're going downstairs or upstairs or walking or kind of anything. And it doesn't mean that you can't move. There's a sense of security of movement that, whoa, Thank you. your foot just cracked. <laughs> so trying to guide from the between the ankle and the knee and get these guys to talk to each other, kind of like wake them up. And there we go. So some of you have been watching our videos. Thank you for being here. Um, 
you'll notice that with each person that we meet, there are some really interesting uh, aspects of um, what's involved that come into play. And uh, if you're a professional and you'd like to learn more, we do teach classes. There will be a fall cohort starting in October. Um, love to have you. There's a virtual option as well. So uh, if you're not a local to Chicago, you can still join us. Uh, we've got people in different states already. And, um, oh, there it goes. Oh, let's practice it a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. There. Okay. So when I push your foot, your knee bends. There. All right. So we're going to just freshen up the right one and just make sure it's all nice and bouncy. I'm using a different combination of peanuts. It matters, but it doesn't matter. We just, this one, we just want to make sure it's all bouncy because it did not have a cast but it can be jealous. It had to do extra work, and it's had to do extra work this year with you hobbling around with the meniscus bothering you. And that is a fear I have that, like, that'll hurt this knee. Well, usually where it comes into play is your lower back. Oh. Because you're off, off sides uneven. Well, that, that's a, a fear I have as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Yay. Okay. So let's see if they're even or matched. So I'm going to take this off. And okay, so I'm going to lift this one. It's easy. And this one, it actually lifts now. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay. And do they turn? They both turn. Very nice. And uh, your yellow socks are actually easy for everyone to tell at home that they're turning. I'm going to lift up higher because I want to make sure that your lower back is equally stretched out with each leg, and then they're going to bend. Is the left knee okay? Yeah. All right. And I just want to bounce a little bit and see if there's a little bit more um, flexing that can happen. There it is. Because muscles, when they haven't been working together, sometimes you match them up and they just need a couple times to practice and then they've got it there all right last thing we're going to do is make sure that your legs and your core are matched up so we have an arm and a leg i'm going to roll you just a little bit toward me perfect and then the other side <laughs> okay oh, i have to be careful um this one. and it's just a little practice but this is also the shoulder yeah with from the car accident so maybe that they're playing off of each other there or involved there it is okay I'm gonna come back and check the right because right now the left is moving better than the right side Yeah, the right side's jealous. Yes. There it is. Now, this is what we call our bug roll. We teach this in our intro class. All right. I think they're pretty matched up. So come on and sit up. And then I'll let you stand. And we will see how you're moving. Okay, how's it putting weight on it? can tell you're testing it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, it feels good. Okay. It feels uh, a little more even, and I feel like the quads here are a little more activated. Excellent. Okay. So, and I feel good, but I'm sore here. I'm sore like I just worked out or something. Well, it's it's been not working quite right. So there's an ease and flow to this now that wasn't there. I What you can't see is I'm just like this on her back, moving her back and forth, and she moves. Um, I'm going to go forward and back. That actually feels more secure, which is good because yeah. that's a balance reaction. And then let's see about turning. Good. Oh, there's no hesitation of that at all. It's very nice. Okay. So um, quick recap. Karen had a... 
torn meniscus on her left leg. Complicating factor was years ago she had broken a tibia fibula in her lower leg and had a full long cast on. And we had to kind of wake up that whole leg before we could restack um, and reset all the muscle interactions at her knee and then her ankle to her knee to her hip, um, which got her quads activated again. Um, and then we matched up both sides because one's been compensating, whether then, now, both, all of it. So uh, what a great example to show just how the littlest thing can um, be influenced by things that have happened in your past and what does happen when you have a cast that immobilizes all those little muscles. They forget how to work together, but they can remember. Um, so again, for those of you interested in uh, being a guest, we're in the northern suburbs of Chicago. Just give a, uh, let me know. Um, I'd love to have you. And if you uh, would like to, a professional, uh, like to learn, um, we do have courses. So look for that information as well. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes. All right. See you next time. Oh, give Karen a big like, thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel.